Hi Sue and welcome to my channel. Today I am working as part of the Crazy Craft Edition design team and I am using the May Crazy Kit. The papers I've chosen to use today is this 49 and Market Spectrum Sherbet painted foundations and this particular page is called Kaleidoscope. I think because of that site, but I think I've got two of everything or three of everything from that collection so I'm going to be using this yellow side. And then also from the kit, I'm going to be using the Cocoa Vanilla These Days Homegrown Paper. So it's got beautiful floral on the back. I'm actually going to use it for this check just to back my photos. Now, first thing I did was I cut off the uh, railing stalks, but I just want to show you something. So if you have a look at these two pages, you can see that they're both 12 by 12. There's not much, you know, it's not like I've miscut them. They're both the same, just, you know, same size. They're 12 by 12, I've measured them. But in order to get that 12 by 12, I've had to cut two distinct sizes off my card stock. So with the 49 and Market, it was less than half an inch. And with the Coco Vanilla, you can see that the piece I've chopped off was significantly larger. Now, it's not a problem, except I used to just come along and look where the pattern ended and chopped it off there. And then wonder why sometimes when I put them into my page protectors, the page was actually bigger than 12 by 12. And I think that's because pieces of paper are not always printed 12 by 12. There may be a little bit extra on the railing strip. So my advice, my tip for today, is to measure your 12 by 12 page and then cut it exactly at that 12 by 12, and then you'll know. Now, I also know that some of Vicky Booten's foundations and um, background papers are not exactly 12 by 12. And look, I'm not really particularly fussed about that if they're a bit shorter, but you know, you certainly don't want to have the top, you know, a couple of millimetres sticking out of your um, protecting sheet because that's when it's going to get damaged and torn. So that's my tip for today. Don't just chop off the pattern from, you know, the brand strip from the pattern. Measure your 12 by 12 page and chop off what's left. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to work on my base page. Now, up until now in doing these May kits, I've just been using what's in the May kit. But today I'm actually going to add a few extra bits and pieces. So the first thing, well, I'll show you what photos I'm going to use. These are some flowers that my mum used to grow. She passed away just over a year ago and going through her photos and these two flowers are just stunning. Now there's lots and lots of flowers that mum grew in her garden so I'm just trying to document some of them that she thought was obviously special enough to take some pretty nice photos. I'll chop those down in a minute but first of all I'm going to prepare my page and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some Spectrum Sherbet Rub-On Transfer Set which is the palettes in the yellow. As you can see, they've got the same sort of design up the top within the page. So I'm just going to follow that theme and add a bit more. And then I'm going to use my Essential Text Blends Sunbeam, also from 49 and Market. So these are some more rub-ons with just bits of writing and splatters and different things. So I'm basically going to just enhance the background that's already there. Both these products are available at the Crazy Craft Obsession website. So I'm not showing you something that you cannot purchase. Alright, and these wrap-ons, if you haven't used their wrap-ons, they're just amazing. Now, what I do to make my life easier is I chop them off. Because I, I'm a messy crafter and it's really easy for me to get some of the bits that I actually don't want to make a mark with on something. So I'm just going to place them where I think I want them to go, which is fine. So you just pull the, the plastic bit with the image and place that where you want it to go. Now I might just need to lift my um, protective sheet for my splatters, which I'm doing in a moment, because I don't want softness might not help me load these up. So then you just take, you know, I'll only use one of these and you can see as it starts to be put down 
that, it goes a little bit opaque with the, with the colours lifting away. I'll just show you that a little bit now. See that the colours lifted. It's just different. So you just put them on. Unlike our rub ons of, you know, when I first started scrapbooking, they're really easy to use. They really work well. I hardly ever have had any images left behind. Um, and when you, if you do, you go lift it up and there's still some left behind. I always take off holding part of the image. So I know these are okay, so I'm going to peel it off the other way. So I'm holding it still. Now I've noticed that there's a sort of a splatter on it that I have forgotten. So I'm just going to lay it back down again and scratch that off. But by holding it still in one section, you're not going to move it and you'll capture everything. So I'll do the same over here with these ones. Just take the paper back and off. You don't need to cut them off first. Like I said, I know what I'm like and I can get myself into a big mess and accidentally scratch down the things that I didn't want to scratch down. still run out of room to put things. I'm so spread out. I've got so much stuff out all the time. Unbelievable. All right, let me see. What do I feel like I need here? Let's grab a piece here. The good thing about these images is they're not a complete image. They're sort of bits and pieces. So you can cut them up and use them as bits and pieces. Emphasizing, increasing our splatters and the little words in the background. When it comes to using the mixed media products, um, you know, more is more. I'm really trying to embrace that this year. So just taking it that step further rather than, you know, staying away. Yeah, that looks good because if you get going, it can look amazing. So that sort of helps when it comes to placing the rub ons. If you don't want to place your things in a spot, where you're actually going to put your photos because that's a really waste. It needs to be a bit higher. 
put it somewhere where you can see it, or at least it's just peeking out of your actual photos. essential ones in the store whenever they can and they come in a huge range of colours. Real good bonus addition to your mixed media. So easy, so stunning. And I've seen people put them on texture and they still go on amazingly well. me is to add some real splatters on top of my fake splatters. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but it does to me. Oh look, I've got another little bit here. I, need to, I feel like I need to pop something. Let's pop that up there. Just Huge difference, but it will just add a little bit more. Alright, so this the um splatters I'm gonna use is the distressed mica stain. Um, this one's flickering candle. Now these are Tim Holtz's um, Holloway collections, so he brings one out every Halloween and Christmas and maybe something else. Um, but they are limited time, so you need to get them when they're available. Now Crazy Crown Possession doesn't have this particular one. Which is in the Halloween set three, which would work just as well for this. So my idea, and I've got such a beautiful glisten, I just love these. Who doesn't love a bit of bling? So I'm just going to splatter some mainly around the edges. No point splattering it where my photos are going to go. And then we're going to tuck some flowers in. So these are Simple Stories by Mind's Eye floral bits that come with the kit. So I'm going to use those to tuck around my photos. All right, so on top of these flowers, I also want to use some of the words in the Simple Stories by Mind, Mind's Eye phone stickers, the wildflower. So I've switched over to doing a voiceover. Not sure what's going on with my audio. I'm looking into it and probably going to get a better solution for my audio so please accept my apologies for that i am using my simple stories my mind's eye um, foam stickers for the bloom and grow title and i really do like the way they look um, i cut them out of the plastic sheet so that it makes it easier for me to use them so i can put them on my page without you know them sticking in the wrong spot so now I'm bringing forward my Simple Stories, My Mind's Eye, Eye Floral Bits and I am going to be working through and putting them around my photos. I'd sort of grouped the little bits into three different sections. Um, you know, so I had a bit of a sprinkling of each type of flower so that each of my three little um, ephemera sections sort of has similar things in them so that not all my pink is in one and all my up, um you know yellow is in one i want a bit of yellow in each and a bit of leaf in each so that i can um even it out a little bit i'm also mounting up this particular flower up on mounting tape so that it um 
you know, gives it a bit of dimension. I don't like a really flat page, especially since I've got those, t the words bloom and grow, they're, they're dimensional. So I do want some of the other elements on my page to also have dimension. These <coughs> little bits and pieces were so easy to use and I really liked how well they, they worked with these photos and with the background page. I do, however, fuss so much with placing my bloom and grow and these flowers. I've cut out some bits, I've sped it up because you did not want to watch 20 minutes of me fuffing around with all these tiny elements. All right, so I think right there you see where I've decided where I want those bits to go. I'm pulling out the 49er Market Eucalyptus Acetate Leaves and grabbing a couple of butterflies to put on my page just for a, a little bit more interest. So I think the three of them is all that I have. So there I'm going to stick up. Now what I find I do with these butterflies is I actually bend up the wings just on either side of the body and that then allows me to glue the body down and the wings will lift up. Now I know in a scrapbook page they will flatten down but you'll find that at least it gives it a little bit of dimension and it still looks like the butterflies are flying. All right, so back to these bloom and grow. I think I've stuck all the other bits down. I'm moving these about. Now the ad is quite easy to stick because it's just one letter. But in a moment, I'm going to show you how I stick my other letters down. Now single words are okay because they're all connected and you get the spacing right. What I'm doing here with the acetate is I'm cutting out the back of the acetate from behind half of, like halfway of the letters. So that the bottom half is stuck to the acetate, but the top half is not. And that helps me to position the letters so they're all still connected. And then what I do is I grab the bottom half on one side and sort of roll it underneath itself and pull it out that way. And that helps me keep the letters in the right space. I, for some reason, I lost my footage, so I've included here a photo of my finished layout. Thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again soon.